first item on the agenda. All right, I tell you what, let's, uh, Tony, you want to introduce yourself and everyone else at the uh, at the uh, table there, and then we'll get started. Tony Filippini, transportation planner. John Joyner, public works director and MPO administrator. I'm Sherry Atwood, I'm the transit planner for SciRide. Andy Lunin, the district planner for Iowa DOT here in central Iowa. Great, thanks for coming. All right. All right, we'll go through the item number one, motion approving annual self-certification for FY 2020. Tony, any comments on that? Yeah, this is just an annual requirement that we certify every year that we're following the uh, federal regulations for our planning activities. Okay, any questions for uh, committee on this? None. All right, entertain a motion to uh, approve the san self annual self-certification for FY 2020. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second, all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. Item two, motion approving FTA Title VI program for submission to the Iowa DOT. Okay. Good evening. Tonight we'll revisit, this is our MPO's Title VI program. In September, uh, the MPO uh, brought this Title VI program to the policy committee to be considered. Uh, we uh, sent that to the Iowa Department of Transportation in September. In December, we got back uh, comments uh, that they would like us to address and resubmit. So uh, in order to fulfill those elements, um, what you see in front of you tonight, the document has been reorganized to match the DOT reviewers format, which we think will help ensure sort of lose, there you go, uh, to ensure that all the items uh, required are easily identifiable from the compliance officer at DOT. We've also updated our notice to the public as uh, asked to include instructions on how to get more information. Finally, we've also added um, analysis of all transportation projects into our analysis. Prior to, we've only included transit related projects. So this now uh, includes all projects that receive funding through the MPO. Uh, so those are roadway and transit projects. So uh, all of those have been incorporated and uh, upon review tonight, we'll send those back to the Iowa Department of Transportation. Okay, questions for committee? I just, I have one. I can't tell if I'm on or not. So if this is on. Um, anyway, but in part C, the public partition participation plan. You've got acknowledgments in there and yet a date of 2019, but the acknowledgments stay as is because that's who did the plan originally. Uh, that's right. So it's reflecting that when the plan was adopted in 2016. And so as we do a public participation plan, which we uh, do anticipate doing in 2019, we'll update the full roster of both committees and uh, staff to accurately reflect that. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? All right, entertain a motion approving FTA Title VI program for submission to the Iowa Department of Transportation. So move. All right, moved and seconded discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Carried. Item three, motion approving transit asset management targets. That's right. In September, Cyrene had provided the MPO with their approved transit asset management plan. Uh, which approves at this time a four-year targets for the required transit asset management. Um, as you might recall, uh, we looked at this in late 2017, uh, which is where we set initial transit asset management targets. Uh, since then, a, uh, a plan has been produced by SciRide. So tonight we're looking to adopt those targets as part of the MPO planning process. Uh, just to remind, uh, the transit targets consist of measuring portions of buses or the proportion of buses um, and shop vehicles which exceed what's called the useful life benchmark, that's what the ULB is, as well as uh, portions of facilities that exceed a, four, a three on the term scale. So the term scale is a uh, facility scale developed by FTA that's being used where one is, a, is poor and five is an excellent condition. So uh, in front of you are these proposed targets. Uh, they've been reviewed by the technical committee um, earlier this month and are before you to, for recommendation for uh, adoption. All right, questions for council, uh, for council, sorry, for the committee. Entertain motion approving transit asset management targets. So moved. Second. 
All right, moving to second discussion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. Item four, motion setting May 28th, 2019 as a date of public hearing regarding amendment to 2019 to 2022 transportation improvement plan. Uh, we continue with uh, national performance measures. Uh, what we're doing tonight is, is uh, a single amendment to uh, some language that we have regarding performance measures in the MPO planning process. Uh, when this tip was uh, originally approved last July, uh, the MPO has not had not yet taken action on pavement and bridge uh, measures as well as system performance and freight. Uh, in September, the MPO policy committee did take action to support both of those sets of state targets. So since then, the state of Iowa has provided us with updated language to put into our tip that accurately shows and talks about um, how the MPO is supporting the state targets in the four different areas. Um, and so we're updating that language here tonight to be in compliance. And uh, um, and with that, we'll put us in keeping with the national performance measure requirement. Any questions? None. All right, entertain a motion setting May 28th, 2019 to date for public hearing. So moved. Second. All right, move second. Discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. Item five. All right. So uh, here is the FY 2020 transportation planning work program. Uh, the work program is something that contains all the regional transportation planning activities that are to be performed by the MPO uh, using the planning dollars that um, are, are uh, attributed to us. So the MPO is responsible for performing federally required activities. Um, is such as long range planning, project programming and other activities. So uh, the work program is seen as an agreement between the MPO and our state and federal partners of what are allowable expenses and activities of the MPO. So being for FY 2020, this, will, uh, this program begins July 1st of 2019 this summer. Uh, a significant activity of the work program will be the continued development of, our, of the long range transportation plan, which we anticipate kicking off later this spring. So um, so that will be a significant part, uh, along with our sort of normal activities of producing our transportation improvement program and our other comprehensive uh, activities that we've performed. Um, so uh, after the review this evening, we'll put this draft on our website for the public to uh, review as well. Uh, we'll be posted online and um, we'll present um, uh, we'll present what comments we received uh, at the public hearing on May 28th. Okay, questions? <clears throat> Entertain a motion approving draft FY 2020 transportation planning work program and setting May 28th, 2019 as a date of public hearing. I'd so move. Second. All right, move to second discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? <laughs> motion carried. Item six. Yes, hello. The uh, passenger transportation plan is a, a required coordinated document between transportation providers and local health human service agencies within the Ames community. The DOT charges each MPO with this requirement and, um, uh, for the Ames area. Um, and actually the MPO has been approving PTPs for the MPOs um, since March of 20, 2007. Um, this document is now uh, required every five years as opposed to annually as it, as it was, was before, but you've uh, modified the current PTP prior to this three different times since our five-year update back in uh, March of 2014. So this document today is a, is a full plan uh, uh, document uh, updated the five sections and you'll see what those sections are, the introduction and process, inventory and process discussion, uh, the coordination issues, pri uh, priorities and strategies, as well as uh, funding mechanisms that um, can be utilized uh, for transportation within the Ames metropolitan area. I will discuss the, the meat of the document is actually the pri priorities and strategies. And the document requires that any section 5310 funding or elderly and disabled funding be within this document in order to um, get grant approval. 
um, specifically the 5310 projects are, and they're identified um, in your packet as the dialeride services uh, for um, Cyride, the customer service portal um, that heard our contractor utilizes shelter improvements, um, small light duty replacement and expansion vehicles, van replacement and expansion vehicles, and then automated vehicle enunciator technology um, is the kind of five projects that, that are um, paid for with this section 5310 funding. So the uh, projects were recommended by the Human Services Council in January to be um, taken to the MPO for formal approval. The DOT reviewed the overall document in February and um, provided no comments. The plan went to the technical committee um, on March 14th and offered no changes to the document. So I'm asking at this time that the policy committee um, approve the PTP for submission to the DOT and the Federal Transit Administration by May 1st of 2019. Okay. Any questions for Sharon? <coughs> All right, entertain a motion approving FY 2020 to 2024 passenger transportation plan. So moved. Second. All right, discussion? Hearing none, entertain, uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. Last item, resolution approving designation of AAMPO representatives to Central Iowa Regional Transportation Planning Alliance for the Ames Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. Prior to our designation as an MPO, our transportation planning activities were carried out through the Central Iowa Regional Transportation Planning Alliance. We're, now that we're an MPO, we're still within that region. So we're now advisory members of these committees. So this is our annual de designation of who our representatives will be. Okay. Have a uh, motion on resolution? Move alternative one. Third second. second. Discussion? Um, I'd just like to comment since I sit on the cert, uh, I never get it right, the, the initials in the right order, but um, on the board, and Tony sits on the board, I just want you to know that the city is well represented. And he and I ended up on now the update, uh, the, what is it the five year update plan, plan for update. And once again, I'm, I'm very pleased to be serving with Tony on it. Great. Good. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. Okay, policy committee comments. I have one comment, and okay. that is I'd like to thank all of the staff who met with me to explain some of the intricacies of the PTP, the LEP, the <laughs> LAP, and, and other assorted acronyms. Um, it was very, very helpful, Good. and I appreciate it. Thank you. David? Nothing tonight. Tim? Juan? No update. Nothing. Um, a quick one to let Cyride know that the Board of Supervisors did pass the letter of support today, and I'll email it to you as soon as I find my office again. I'll <laughs> debate at some point tomorrow. The other is that um, as a result of our planning staff meeting with RDG during the uh, discussions on the uh, uh, plan 2040. Um, we had on the agenda today, a letter to you guys. I signed that one also thanking for the opportunity, et cetera. But between the staff report uh, that was brought to us a couple weeks ago and then this letter today, it has generated a lot of discussion about the, um, the Ames Urban Fringe Plan, including one thing I think I'll have to talk to the technical committee about, but someone has, has asked that we present a proposal of opening up 190th all the way to um, R38. And I wanna talk to the group about that. I don't think our engineer's in favor of it and, we, and it'd be our money anyway, by the way, don't worry. Okay, but um, I just wanna let you know about that. And also we had several people who responded about some thoughts um, that uh, we, just to let you know that as far as some of the constituents in the fringe area, they're ready for us to open talks. And I, you know, I know that the MPPO uh, is part of that and you're still working on your 2040. I just thought I'd give you a heads up about what may be coming. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all right. 
entertain, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you for coming. We will uh, take a very, very short uh, couple minutes to get reset, and then we will... Call the uh, regular city council meeting for March 26 to order. And it's my honor tonight to start us off with a proclamation. So we'll get going with that and then we'll proceed. <coughs> and you want to come up and uh, do I have a she, she volunteered to take the photo. Okay. So. All, right. All right. Okay. We're going to uh, make a proclamation here regarding National Volunteer Week. So, whereas the entire community can inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take action that changes the world, and whereas volunteers can connect with local community service opportunities through hundreds of community service organizations, laying the foundation for tomorrow's growth and prosperity, and where the giving of oneself in service to other another empowers a giver and the recipient, and whereas experience teaches us that government by itself cannot solve all of our nation's problems, and whereas our country volunteer force of over 63 million is a great treasure, and whereas volunteers are vital to our future as a caring and productive nation. Therefore, I, John A. Hala, Mayor of the City of Ames, Iowa, do hereby proclaim April 7th through 13th, 2019, as National Volunteer Week. And by volunteering and recognizing those who serve, we can replace disconnection with understanding and compassion. So, Ann, you want to say a few words? I, thank you. Yeah.
Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you to this community. It is a joy and a pleasure every day to come to work and coordinate volunteer opportunities um, and everyone's willingness and passion to work together to make a better community at all ages. So thank you again to this great community. And tonight, it's actually my special honor to recognize David Kim. David has, um, I say it, performed. That sounds like a so perfunctory. Donated well over 250 volunteer hours. And I'm going to ask him in a minute just to talk about that. But he, I am honored tonight to present a President of the United States Volunteer Service Award. And I'm going to read the short letter that was sent to David present the certificate, and then ask him to say a few words, if you would. So, Congratulations on receiving the President's Volunteer Service Award. On behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you for your service to your fellow Americans and those most in need. <coughs> Through your dedicated service, you have ensured a, the continuation of America's unparalleled commitment to improving the lives of others. Over this past year, you have served as a model of the American spirit. Your many hours of service have strengthened the bonds of cooperation and trust that bring people together while helping to address some of the greatest challenges of our time. Thank you for your enduring commitment to serving your community and our nation. I trust that you will continue to work for the betterment of others and an even stronger future for the American people. And it's signed by Donald J. Trump. So David, congratulations. You want to just go ahead and just say a few words about uh, what you're involved with? I think it was very, very interesting, please. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here receiving this award. Um, for the past four years, I've volunteered at the Little Cyclone University Summer Retreat Program. It's a summer program uh, targeted towards low-income families. Uh, during the summer, there's obviously no school. So, um, and daycare is very quite expensive. Uh, so the summer arrangement program serves as an affordable um, place where kids are enriched during the summer. Um, and some of my duties included uh, organizing activities, uh, making sure the students got from one place to another without major problems and um, some cleanup things at the end. Uh, it's been very fun. It's been very rewarding to serve the students of Ames, and I hope to do more in the future. Thank you again, Mayor Hila. <laughs> Council, I would ask for a, a point of personal privilege this evening. Uh, this is not on the agenda, but Bob, I'm going to need your help. If you would, please come over here. No, it's not on the agenda, Bob. <laughs> All right, starting to get emotional. You. <laughs> <laughs> This is Bob's last council meeting. He has worked for the city for 38 and a half years. And so we cannot let this go without having a proclamation. And we wanted your family to come and enjoy it. And I um, wanted also to invite my two predecessors who I count as both um, mentors as well as good friends to uh, join me. So I'm gonna read this entire proclamation 
and this is for you. And no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a lot of time on this one. <clears throat> City of Ames, Iowa Proclamation, Bob Kindred Day. <laughs> <laughs> and she's welcome to come up here. So, <laughs> Whereas the entire Ames community is indebted to Bob Kindred for his exemplary and dedicated service as assistant city manager and Whereas Bob started working for the city of Ames on April 15th, 1980, which is 38 and a half years ago, which translates into 10,020 working days or 80,160 hours. And in case you didn't realize that, Bob. <laughs> Whereas Bob has worked alongside 34 different Ames city council members, five mayors and countless fellow Ames, city of Ames staff members and Whereas Bob has served as an invaluable and encouraging staff liaison to various boards and commissions, and whereas Bob has willingly stepped in as an interim department head on numerous occasions upon a staff member's departure, and most recently as the interim director of human resources, all of which were done in addition to carrying out all the assistant city manager responsibilities, and whereas the citizens of Ames have directly benefited from Bob's representation of the city's interest at the Iowa State House, tracking and lobbying legislation that may affect the quality of life of Ames residents and or the operation of the city of Ames government. And whereas Bob has been a valued resource to countless city council members and mayors, not the least of which being those undersigned. And whereas the current mayor, city council and all of city of Ames staff members will greatly miss Bob in the way he humbly carries out his professional responsibilities with dedication and determination. Therefore, I, John A. Hala, Mayor of the City of Ames, and with the full support of and concurrence by Ann H. Campbell and Ted Tedesco, previous mayors of Ames, Iowa, do hereby proclaim Monday, April 1st, 2019, as Bob Kindred Day in Ames, Iowa. And no joke. No joke. <laughs> How's that for your first day of retirement? <laughs> and before I turn the mic over to uh, Ted and Nan. Uh, all Ames community members are encouraged to personally convey their appreciation to Bob for his outstanding 38 and a half years of service. Everyone's invited to attend his retirement open house next Monday, April 1st. It'll be held in the Ames City Hall gymnasium from 2 to 4 p.m. Now I'm going to invite Mayor Tedesco to come up and say a few words, and then Mayor Campbell, and then I will close. Ted? Thank you. Thank you, John. Is unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. Yeah. I did want to say a few words about Bob Kendrick. Not about all the years he served, but about the fact that Bob has portrayed to all of us as citizens, as visitors to this community, as people who wanted to invest in this community, to students the openness that city government should be. Bob's door was always open. Bob is the kind of person who could talk with any group, any citizens, and make them feel welcomed and appreciated. And they may have disagreed, they may have come with a chip on their shoulder, but Bob could work with them, get them to compromise on the issue, and they all love very pleasantly. I think Bob exemplifies what we want the city of Ames to be, an open community. And Bob, I want to tell you, you've done a very, very good job. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, John, for including Ted and me uh, in this. Your proclamation is certainly very well done. However, I think the things that can't go into proclamations are the kind of, if you will, the, the human aspect that Bob has given 
to all aspects of the community and the city. I, I always wondered when sitting there if Bob actually had eyes in the back of his head when there would be somebody who was obviously a little disgruntled at the end of a council meeting and he would quietly slip out and soothe uh, rippled waters then. Or just recently, I had somebody who had been on one of the many boards and commissions that Bob staffed. She stopped in when she was in town with her father to say, I'm going to be here on April 1st, because when I was new on that commission, I was afraid to speak until Bob came and said, just because you're new doesn't mean you don't have something to offer. Or Bob even comforts mayors. Uh, and uh, just last week, I went to visit a friend who I had heard had just had a heart attack, and I rushed to see him right away because I had heard that he was the first one to visit me when I had a heart attack. When I went to see him, he said, no, that assistant city manager was already there <laughs> when, when I got there. So whether it's somebody uh, in the audience or anyone, we appreciate what you've done. However, uh, I think you will discover, as I've discovered, that the community that you've helped build has a lot of really fun things going on Tuesday nights. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn that there are concerts, there's lectures, there's basketball games, there's babysitting opportunities, there's yoga classes, there's invitations out for dinner with your friends. And I've sampled all of those. Mine started with my friends inviting me out on my first free Tuesday night and giving me a gift. And that shop had the same gift for you, Bob. Uh, it is a t-shirt that reads, it's Tuesday, I'm available. <laughs> There's not <clears throat> probably um, a lot more I can add to that, but the fact is, is that but <clears throat> the city of Ames doesn't realize is that a lot of work gets done behind the scenes and a lot of it's done by Bob. And um, he's helped mentor me. He's kind of filled in. He said, I'll take care of that during my first, my first year term. And uh, I'm forever grateful, you know, Bob, for being, you know, the, the, the answer man for me. And uh, what's interesting is he's very mild mannered, but we went down to the state house. Was it last week? I think it was. Yeah, last week. Boy, he can get pretty animated when he uh, is passionate about something. I'm sure the kids know that. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> but anyway, so we have a proclamation, Bob. But there's one other thing, and uh, if you come up here, please. We couldn't let Bob go without our council and previous councils giving a little memento. So. It's just an award that's just basically something we want Bob to remember us by. And it just says, Bob, on behalf of the current and previous Ames mayors and city councils you have worked alongside, we commend and thank you for your exemplary and dedicated service to the Ames community for over 38 years. Thank you so much. Well, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've never seen so much to do made at a city council meeting about <laughs> someone retiring. Okay, and uh, and I appreciate all of these heartfelt, well, at least received so deeply in my heart, your, your messages and recognitions. I'd just like to say, I'm one of only 600, uh, of over 600 um, City of Ames employees, workers, who, in my view, are equally dedicated and do all they can to serve this great community. So um, I don't feel worthy to be singled out. I, I appreciate your sentiments, yeah, and, and especially the new shirt that I can wear. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and, and, and what a privilege to serve such a great community. And you want to introduce your family? Oh, okay, thank you. My wife, Sheila. Daughter Katrina, daughter Cassie, grandkids Ava, Audra, Aaliyah, Jonah, son-in-law Mike, and Quinn, our youngest grandchild, who's <laughs> come to our first city council meeting. <laughs> Maybe her last, yeah. Okay, thank you.
let's uh let's go ahead and have a some pictures. <laughs> well, thank you for your indulgence. And those that are standing out, that there are, you're welcome to sit down here in the front if you'd like to now. All right. That was good. <laughs> <clears throat> we will move on to consent agenda. Here, Bob, by the way. We have a little joke here. We, we try and keep track of the time, and so he, Bob just said it took a half an hour. Well, I said 6.45 on mine, so I'm going to <laughs> All right. We're into consent. Uh, Council, we are working from an amended agenda this evening. Uh, staff, <clears throat> excuse me, has pulled item 16, and they have they um, recently asked that we also pull item 18 from the agenda. Uh, does council have anything? And, and I have been informed that we need to, if we want to pull anything, just make a motion to pull something, have a second, have a voice vote. So we'll start following that protocol. Is there anything that needs to be pulled tonight that won't be discussed? Mayor, I'd move that we pull item 30. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. David? I, would, I would like to pull item 19 and 24. Okay. Second. All right. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carried. Uh, anything else? Entertain a motion then to approve the uh, consent agenda less item 16, 18, and those items are pulled. So moved. Second. Roll call. <clears throat> aye. 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 All right. Carried. All right, David. Um, so uh, there were some questions about the parking study. Um, would you like to assist with that? Yes. Well, actually, I think do you have? Um, I can. Um, well, uh, let me just start with um, uh, one of the topics that um, that I discussed earlier. Uh, was that th there were some th things in the um, the draft agreement that I, I think maybe should be modified? Did, do, are you aware of these al already, or should I go through them? I am. Okay, uh, so I, talked about yeah. So I had in mind, for example, the expansion of the boundary to the north in order to include one of the city parking lots, and then maybe up to Seventh Street as well. Um, if if you have if you have a list of things like that, that that have already been discussed, maybe you could walk us through that. Sure, I, I think so. The issue of the boundary, uh, I've already spoken with Walker here earlier this morning. Um, yeah, the, the, the full intent was that we would cover all city owned facilities, including on street or off street. Um, so there's no problem with including uh, the essentially the library parking lot. Um, essentially, the map was just a square to maybe for simplicity, but we never intended to leave any of that out. Uh, as far as extending the boundary up to 7th Street, that would that would increase the scope 
of this project. Um, the reason why is because any of the on-street or essentially downtown designated parking spaces, um, that's really what we were, that's what our understanding was what we were gonna study. When you start to get into the neighborhoods, I understand that that is an impact of downtown and a campus like campus town can affect uh, surrounding neighborhoods. Um, but that data gets very difficult to separate from um, the, the core of the downtown. Uh, so I would recommend if, if once this study is uh, done and move forward and the recommendations, I mean, what we're, we want from this study is what does the downtown need for parking today? What will it need in the future? Which includes orderly and uh, good parking habits, which includes things that would keep uh, like maybe employee parking or customer parking outside of neighborhoods. And then the next phase perhaps could be, well, are we really being successful in that effort? And then start to look at maybe more specifically neighborhood impact. Um, but if we included that in this project, we would need to increase the scope um, and therefore the cost of it. So it needs to, I need to know essentially how important that would be at this time. So. I guess would we be looking at a um, loss of opportunity to do to do it correctly at the right time by not taking it on now, or is it something you think that could be just as effectively done with a later decision? Yes, I think it could be done if we had a study focused on uh, downtown parking impacting a neighborhood. Like that, that would be one of the focuses of a, another study. There's nothing that um, those two could be two separate issues. I think they could be two okay. separate issues and would be successful with either. Okay. One of, the, one of the questions we talked about was just going back and reviewing the council meeting minutes that we had on this, <clears throat> the parking study and also the uh, <clears throat> council discussion at several meetings and Damon and John and I talked about that this morning and you're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, you're going to use that basically as a uh, launching pad to be, you, you believe it's all included already in the proposal. And so constantly it's just more or less making sure, we wanna make sure that what council talked about previously, like using the Uber, Lyft, the impact of uh, bicycles, um, uh, scooters, et cetera, you know, what sure. impact might that have? And so uh, Damien's assured me that yes, that's all part and parcel of the uh, of that proposal. And then you have some fancy transportation term, was it curbside uh, management or something like that? Is that right? That takes care right. of a lot of those pieces that are included. So one thing maybe I could say to hopefully uh, reassure council that this is meeting the objectives of what the direction was. Uh, I mean, the, one of the reasons why Walker was selected is because they know the state of the practice. So it includes uh, not just downtown parking, uh, downtown business impact, all the emerging technologies, all those things are part and parcel with why they're being selected. That's why they're the most qualified. Um, and, they're, and they're also, uh, the point of the study is for them to meet council's vision for uh, the Lincoln Way corridor and, and downtown redevelopment. Um, so we're uh, really looking at how uh, parking, we want a professional opinion, that was our understanding of the whole, whole study, which is why the scope is more confined to that one topic, um, <coughs> is how can parking support uh, council's vision for the Lincoln Way corridor plan in this area and the, the growth of downtown. So. Uh, we're not trying to set any kind of separate vision there. We're really gonna be taking that and that's where our, our coordination with planning and the consultant uh, is really gonna set that as what our future looks like and the, the data collection is gonna tell us what we're doing today, so. And maybe just, just close and commenting who the stakeholders will be involved with that process too. You know, you, you've got a good broad cross section of individuals and yeah, absolutely. It's going to include uh, users, business, um, advocates. Uh, the, we're, we're going to look at the, the the chamber will also be involved. All of our staff will be involved. Uh, and then one thing that uh, I think we talked about earlier today would be that one of the first things we'll do once Walker is on board and working is we're going to, anybody who wants to stay informed, uh, put out a solicitation, and then they can be essentially on a list of notification. In addition to our normal public website, um, all the other methods, but if you want a specific maybe email or something, we'll have a sign-up list that we can have. So if you're interested or have been interested in this topic, you can stay uh, up to date. Okay. Good. Anything else? All right, I entertain a motion on the uh, resolution. Move for approval. Second. 
All right. Who is second in roll call? Aye. 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 Thank you. I am 24. Um, I, I pulled this just because um, I had a request for clarification. 24D, this is about the farm to, ta uh, farm to table event and um, 24 as a whole is about the farmer's market generally, but, but 24D is about the, um, no, I take it back. 24 is about the farm to table event and 24D mentions a waiver of parking meter fees the event is scheduled to be on a Sunday. There will be no parking meter fees. Do I have that right? Correct. Okay. So um, do we need to modify this resolution in yes. order to make this? No. So just strike the part about waiving parking, parking meter, meter fees. fees? Correct. Okay. So it should read resolution approving a waiver of electrical fees. Is that correct? Yes. Is she? Yes. That's correct. <laughs> so um, I would move to approve 24A through C as written and additionally uh, the resolution approving the usage and waiver of electrical fees for the event. Okay. Second. All right. Discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Sorry. Make oh. right. Roll call, Parley. Sorry. Resolutions are admitted. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. And item 30, Gloria. I pulled this one primarily because the residents of the tea garden area have been very concerned about the scheduling for this project and I wanted it to be foregrounded for them should they happen to be tuning in to watch this meeting at some time so they can get the schedule for for the uh, movement of this project forward. Right and we appreciate you recognizing that it has been a long time coming we've made a lot of progress in working with the property owners in the area. And as residents can see, we've actually started dropping trees in that area. We got consent from one of those little sign and easement. So some trees are being dropped because we need to drop them by April 1st in order to meet the threatened and endangered species for bats uh, requirement. Otherwise we would have had to have been delayed until October 1st. So um, we've gone ahead and we're dropping those and then we'll get the easement signed as well while we're getting these bids. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Is there a motion? I would move we approve the plans and specifications for the Tea Garden Area Drainage Improvements Project and establish April 17th, 2019 as the date of letting and April 23rd, 2019 as the date for report of bids. Second. Okay, move and second. Discussion? Roll call? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Now's the time in our meeting for public forum. This is an opportunity for people in the general public to address topics of city business that are not listed on the agenda. And uh, I have several cards here that I will call out. I'm going to ask each speaker to limit their time to three minutes or less. And we will start uh, with Gabriel Heinrich. And if you would uh, introduce yourself and your address, and then Jerry Neal also. Pardon me. We're doing this as a pair. If you could pull Neil, Jerry. Neal oh, and Jerry Neal. Yeah. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, so three minutes or six minutes? <laughs> three minutes. Very good. All right. I like you. All right. <laughs> would you introduce both yourselves and your addresses? You may proceed. Gabrielle Heidrich, um, address two six one nine Hunt Street. Do I have to say the zip code okay. and stuff? Okay. Jerry Neal, 916 Ridgewood Avenue, here in Ames. Thank you. Okay. Hello, my name is Gabrielle Heydrich, and I am here as an environmental activist and community organizer on behalf of the Ames Climate Action Team. I'm also chair of the Climate Reality Project Campus Core chapter at Iowa State University. Tonight, I would like to present the petition we have gathered since Dr. Jay Arbuckle's address here back in January. The petition reads, the scientific community around the world agrees that climate change is occurring and is human-induced. Scientists also warn that if it is not addressed now, climate change will accelerate beyond our control and will threaten our survival. We call on the city of Ames and Iowa State University to reduce greenhouse gases and phase out carbon pollution to zero. 
To achieve this, we request that plans with verifiable phases be urgently forged to rapidly shift to 100% carbon neutral by 2030 at the latest. And, um, sorry. Uh, we have 400 signatures calling for urgent action from city council um, on this petition to decarbonize our energy grid and to address climate change. So I'm also speaking on behalf of the Ames Climate Action Team. And we're presenting this petition for three reasons. The first one is that it's kind of part of our goals, which is to work on local actions to transition Ames to a 2030 neutral community. So that's number one. The second one is we want to formally add our support to the petition that was presented by the students to council earlier this year. And the third reason we're doing this is because we want to continue to communicate that we have a sense of urgency about climate crisis that's in play right now. Um, the petition has, um, you might say, overtly ambitious goals. And I'm referring to the idea that we've presented the 100% carbon neutral, um, the task force by April 1st. But I think that the point isn't the exact date. The point is to signal that there is a growing concern among the AIM citizens and that we have a sense of urgency about getting action moving on climate. Um, the point is to signal that we have a, a scope of energy and interest and expertise that's out there in the community that are willing to work with the council and with the city to try to define what this means and how we might move it forward. So I think we wanna say thank you for allowing us the opportunity to present the petition. But I also want to say thank you to a number of people who showed up tonight specifically to take time because they wanted to support this public forum. And with your allowance, I'd like to have those folks to stand because I do want to say thank you to all of you who took the time to be here. Thank you so much. And um, we're willing to try to answer some questions if you have some or perhaps somebody in our group will be a little more qualified to, uh, to answer them. But thank you again for this opportunity. Right. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. Diane, yes, thank you. All right, uh, Nancy Schrader is next. Just call Nancy Schrader. Hi there. Yeah. yeah. You Did yourself, you? Nancy, and also your address. And then okay. You Nancy Schrader, and I live at 2309 Fillmore, but I'm um, representing University Barbers at 123 Welch. Um, in previously, there was a the council approved the, with the removal of parking on Welch. And we were talking to other owners and um, customers, and there were we were amazed at the number of people that weren't aware and that were upset about this, and asked that we um, start start a petition asking the council to uh, reconsider. So we did that, and we thought we might get a few names, but we had over seven hundred. So um, ninety percent of our business is um, townspeople and only about 10% students. But um, we would like to have the council reconsider the elimination of parking and especially um, the elimination of handicap parking. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And Julie Peterson. Hello, Julie Peterson, and I am representing University Barbers at 123 Welch as well. And I also wanted to mention that um, we definitely are against the removal of the parking on Welch. It is totally our livelihood out there to have that parking. And when we put the petition around, it was just at three weeks, barely three weeks, and we had over 700 signatures. And we had some people that continued to get signatures after we had already sent them in. And so we had told them that we were already 
you know, we'd already sent them in. But that just goes to show that a lot of people are very concerned about it and they're still willing to try to fight with us. Um, we have had several customers that need the handicap spot. It's the only handicap spot in that block of Welch. And we have several that physically are not able to walk further than where that handicap spot is. And when I have addressed the issue as to where that handicap spot might be moved, if it were to be eliminated, no one has really thought of it. And for us, we've had, um, we've had clients that have actually said that if we had parking removed on Welch and definitely the handicap removed, that they would have to find somewhere else to go because they just could not physically go any further than that. And on either side of Welch on Chamberlain, they're walking up hills, you know, to get there. And it may not seem much to able-bodied people, but when you're with a walker, a cane, whatever, it, it gets a little bit more difficult. And it's not uncommon for us to have customers come in and say, oh my gosh, I've been driving around for 10 minutes and I can't seem to find a parking spot, you know. And so I just, I don't understand how it's going to help us. I've been at University of Barbers for over 28 years and I'm paid on a commission basis. And if my customers can't get to me, I don't make money. And it's, it's as simple as that. And I feel like I go home at night and I talk to my husband and I'm like, you know what? I might get pushed out of campus town just simply because of that one decision. Because like I said, for over 28 years, I've been able to count on parking. And it's not just people wanting to be right in front of the shop to get there. It's not that. It's just eliminating that parking. It just pushes so many people, so many other places and further down. And I don't want to have to relocate. I love the location. I love Campus Town. But like Nancy said, probably 90% of our customers will be driving in and they need parking. They're not on foot. They're not on bikes. Maybe 10% are. But that parking is so critical to my job and my paycheck and support my family. And so I really, really encourage you to reconsider and save our parking on Welch. And hopefully you guys pay attention and, and appreciate all of our signatures that we got in the petition. And thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Council, <Chair, coughs> excuse me, Council, you're aware of this <coughs> is one of the items on our disposition of communication to Council. And uh, they asked if they could speak and explained that that's not a time where they could speak. So they were put in, asked to speak at public forum. So this is a related to that item. Anybody else like to address council, Ryan? <coughs> My name's Ryan Davis, 204 Clark Avenue. I am president of the Ames Lincoln Highway Business Alliance. Mayor, City Council, City Staff, I'm here tonight to introduce the formation of the Ames Lincoln Highway Business Alliance. This is a 501c nonprofit org organization that is not affiliated with any other group as run solely by its members. The mission of the Ames Lincoln Highway Business Alliance can be described in four words, promote, educate, support, and re retain. We will promote the business members along and adjacent to Lincoln Way. We will educate the public on the history of the Lincoln Highway, issues facing Lincoln Way, and what this strong business corridor means to this community. We will support not only the businesses along Lincoln Way, but also support the community in which it resides. And finally, to retain and encourage local small business ownership in the area. If you want to join our group, you know, you're more than welcome. Uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook at Ames Lincoln Highway Business Alliance. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Ryan. Front row there. Yep. Hi, my name is Talia Jensen. I reside at 1809 Roosevelt Avenue here in Ames, but I'm also a small business owner in Campus Town on Welch Avenue. And I also wanted to speak to the decision of the removal of parking. Recently, as we've been trying to encourage 
customers and residents to come to Campus Town, it's become increasingly harder even with the parking. I'm not sure if you've noticed the planter project that was in place a while ago, but even with that, we've seen very poor planning, um, a lot of missed ideas about taking care of the planters and the snow removal that comes with it. So with the removal of the parking, I would also like to understand and for everyone to consider how we've planned on handling the removal of the parking. Um, yes, there are some other places where the customers can park, but how will we encourage people to continue to come to Campus Town if we can't give them opportunities for parking on the negative 32 degree days we had this winter? Um, the weather has become a, a problem with parking, but also uh, I think there are other ways we can allocate the budget to encourage people to spend time in Campus Town without removing the parking and, and still accommodating all the businesses and handicap and issues that we need there. But there could be something as simple as um, a mural, a painted mural you'll see from Nashville to Des Moines, a very affordable idea to encourage people to visit the area, but we don't have to remove the parking and we can still get pictures of the campus town where people will post them on their Instagram and encourage other people to come. So maybe with the reconsidering of, of the removal of parking, we could also consider some other ideas to still encourage people to come that doesn't hurt our, our businesses year round. Again, in the winter, our biggest shopping season is Christmas time but it's really cold and really blizzardy and, and almost impossible to, to get around without driving. So I thank you for listening to us and, and taking this into consideration. And uh, I, I hope we can come up with some other great ideas for Campus Town. Thank can you, you. Kelly, can you tell us what business you Yes, uh, work, I'm work sorry. At? It's uh, Portobello Road. It's a women's boutique in Campus Town. And we've been there seven years with parking. Um, I also have heard a lot of horror stories of customers coming and and finally finding a spot only to be screamed at by owners of the spot. And I really, I don't think that's a good way to encourage people to spend time in the area if, <laughs> if they're getting in trouble for, for simply pulling in a quick spot to, to make a run. So, I think there's a lot of issues there with the parking that maybe we could consider before we keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's uh, Kyle Poorman. I live at 1815 Northwestern Avenue. Um, but my uh, um, time speaking to the council is really about, um, it's about Mortensen Road west of, of South Dakota. Um, in that area, I think it's probably the highest density area um, in town now, mostly students. Um, and on both sides of the road there west of Warrenton Road doesn't have a complete sidewalk network, um, but both on the, uh, um, the north and the south side, it's not complete. Um, and so this issue really goes to the fact that how we develop sidewalks in Ames has to have a developed building in front of it, and the developer has to put in the sidewalk, basically. Um, but this area in Ames, it's been developing for about 20 years now. I know because I, you know, when I graduated from Iowa State in 2004, I know those buildings were going up. Um, there's still not a sidewalk there for this really dense area. I don't know how many apartment buildings are out there right now, but it's significant. Um, uh, and it's important that, that people have a sidewalk to walk on or bike on. And actually the area um, uh, has some great potential um, because it has that bike path that's going from Iowa State all the way out to South Dakota. Um, and then the sidewalk stops. In fact, there's ruts like the Oregon Trail kind of along the, uh, along the, um, uh, the, the road there. And I know that, that this is an issue also in Somerset where there aren't apartment buildings in Somerset, there aren't sidewalks, um, or in other developments where there aren't 
homes. There aren't sidewalks in front, so you have a disability issue. Um, but but I'd really encourage the city to think about um, the provisioning of sidewalks along with roads um, as as a really essential um, to being uh, you know, as essential to the neighborhood. Um, and so I, I'd hope that you'd put that to staff um, to think about not just relying upon a building going up and then saying, well, it's important that you have the sidewalk here, but, but, you know, if 20 years goes by and there isn't a sidewalk, that's, you know, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Kyle, Kyle you may be aware that <coughs> your, uh, request, your email is actually, you don't, you, you give your card also to Diane. Uh, your email is on actually on under disposition of communication to council tonight. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Anybody else? All right. Seeing none, we'll close public forum and move on to item 39, hearing on concrete replacement of two side ride bus turnarounds. Good evening. Um, Wanted to take just a minute before we get into items 39 and then 40, which is also SciRide as well, uh, to introduce Barb Neal. She is, uh, as of Monday, will be the interim transit director at SciRide. Uh, so we're going to kind of tag team the SciRide items tonight and explain those to you. So um, item 39 uh, is a construction project uh, that we are planning for the summer. Uh, we have turnarounds uh, that are uh, beginning to crumble uh, and we need to replace those. Uh, we had planned on doing two turnarounds, the one at the middle school and the one at Ontario Street in California. However, we ran into, as we were working through the, the bidding process, discovered that there were some legal issues with the middle school um, site and that uh, we'll need to refer that to the legal department before we can move forward on that one. So that one would not be considered in, um, in um, reporting of the bids or awarding of the bids tonight. Uh, however, the, uh, the uh, turnaround at Ontario and California, uh, we did receive four bids. Um, the low bid was from Jensen Builders uh, at 47700 um, And so we do want to move forward on that item uh, or on that construction project. The Transit Board did review the bids also on March 15th and approve those as well. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. Sherry, do we anticipate having any problems getting a quick claim deed on that other turnaround? I hope not, is maybe the answer to that. Um, it, it apparently was some paperwork that was not filed um, that we're discovering at the, at the time that it was constructed in 2004. So I don't know exactly what legally it will take to untangle that, um, but I'm hoping that it will be just a, a quick discussion with the school district and we can work through that quickly. Other questions? All right, this is a hearing, so I uh, declare the hearing on the concrete replacement of the two side ride bus turnarounds to be open. Is there anyone in the audience that will wish to address council on this particular topic? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion and resolution approving plan final plans and specifications and warning contract for site one to Jensen Builders Limited of Des Moines, Iowa, an amount of 47700 Move alternative one. Second. All right, move a second. Discussion? Roll call. Hi. 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 Okay, and then item 39B, motion rejecting all bids for site two, which is the Ames Middle School turnaround. So moved. Second. All right, motion made and seconded. Discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. All right, item 40. Um, as Sherry mentioned, our second um, kind of project for the summer is our Syride bus wash project. Um, and it will be replacing our current bus wash that's more than 15 years old. So we uh, received three bids on that. Um, the low bid was with HPC. They had a base bid of 500000 And so we had um, put in our bid six alternatives. And because of that low base bid, we were able to go with all six of our alternatives that we wanted for the bus wash in an amount of $617,300. Um, our transit board, as Sherry mentioned, too, also approved this on March 15th. So they reviewed the bids and approved them. So we're asking for you to move alternative one. Okay. Questions for Barb, the interim director of SciRide in three days, please. <laughs> Just one qu qu question. Um, so we have discussions about someday relocating SciRide. Um, what would happen to a structure like this if you change locations? 
Um, well, I think relocating, and Sherry can probably speak this too, but I think relocating will be a long project um, to be able to move the entire facility to the other place. So I think, honestly, the useful life on a bus wash is about 10 years. So I don't see where Cyride would have enough money set aside to be able to take our entire facility and put it in a second, full second location within 10 years. So I think it would have used its useful life. The plan is if we do move forward on two facilities that we would have a bus wash at both so that we could service them kind of independently? Is that yes, uh, with the fleet size that we have, stand industry standards usually require two bus washes in order to get your buses cleaned on, on a nightly basis in, a, in an, an efficient way. We only have one. Uh, so I do think as we look at the second facility, um, we'll need to be looking at a second bus wash anyway. So I, this is a good use of, of the funding at this time. And as, as Barbara mentioned, uh, we this is going to be a long planning process, a long construction process. We have to get grants and so forth. So we, I do think within the 10 years, uh, this the useful life will still be. Okay, thanks. Yep. All right. All right. We also need to open the public hearing on this. So I declare the public hearing on replacement of the Cyride bus wash to be open. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to address council on this? Don't go away, Sherry. Are we declaring a national Sherry Day? Too? Yeah. <laughs> well, not quite. But that was, that was a comment I want to make before. All right. Seeing none, I'll close the hearing. I entertain a motion and resolution approving plans, specifications, and awarding contract to HPC of Ames in the amount of six hundred seventeen thousand three hundred dollars. So moved. Second. All right. Move second. Discussion. Roll call. Aye. 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 Um, you have to counsel. I just want to thank you, Sherry, for all of your work and as the director of Cyride. You've done an outstanding job, and I, I, I was blessed to be on the board for a few years and work together with you. I know, Barb, you do an outstanding job. I know that, so I'm thrilled to see that you're you're going to take over for a time being. But anyway, just thank you for your work, thank and you. I know thank Cyride you. has really grown. Thank and for your support over these years, as and well. you had a uh, Cyride 2.0 was uh, mm -hmm. a heavy lift and. I can just tell council that Sherry was always there trying to follow the board's direction and just doing an outstanding job. So commend you, thank you. Uh, I don't have a certificate proclaiming <laughs> today, but anyway, but uh, right. you're, you're you. appreciated and uh, we wish you well in your retirement. Appreciate it, thank All you. All right, thank you. All right, item 41, hearing on steam turbine number seven, parts procurement. Mr. Com, not here. If you have any questions, we'll answer. Any questions for staff on this item? Otherwise, we're going to open the public hearing on this one too. All right, declare the public hearing on steam turbine number seven, parts procurement, to be open. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address council on this? Seeing none, I close the public hearing, and staff's recommendation is to reject all bids. Is there a motion to that effort? To that effect? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carried. All right. We need a resolution approving a resolution approving preliminary plan specification setting April 16, 2019 as bid due date and April 23, 2019 as a date of public hearing. So moved. Second. All right. Discussion? Roll call. Aye. 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 Very good. All right, item 42. Um, first passage of ordinance to allow properties to increase number of occupants by completing code requirements to make room with a legally existing egress window, a code compliant bedroom. And I think Sarah and Mark have a few comments to make before we get into discussion. Good evening. Uh, so this is the text amendment you requested us to come back with uh, regarding adding bedrooms to properties that have existing egress windows. The language allows somebody to apply with us. There's no formal application, but we need to make sure that we know who's applying in those 30 days and then six months for them to fulfill the requirements and have a bedroom that we would then inspect. So that's what the language does. Um, I'm open to answer any questions. I think we, we received a, a query um, asking whether the, the text was specific enough or could it be interpreted as 
existing at the time you put in your application, as in we rush to put in an egress window in the, ne the next 30 days when we have an open slot. Yes, and that was a very astute observation. And uh, so we've had some uh, discussions about that today. And uh, uh, and then we, we've we come up with some language uh, for an amendment that would sort of make that very clear so that it's that question wouldn't be there. So, so it essentially states that they have to have had the egress window in place on January 1st, 2018 mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. number was frozen. Okay. And we so, can verify that with building permits. So one of the things that council is trying to do is not to, from the day is try and reword ordinances. Would it, be a, it would seem appropriate council to just make a motion to send it back to staff and then just go ahead and, um, have you come back with a cleaned up ordinance? Would that be appropriate, Mark? That'd be fine. A approve on first reading. No, no, we just we just we table the first reading and we just go ahead and get this. Otherwise, we're going to start doing the parsing of the. Um, unless it's a minor, minor amendment, but I'm just trying to go back. I'm going back to what our goal setting session was and trying to avoid trying to do these changes of ordinances from the dais. I think it's pretty minor. It, it is a pretty minor amendment, okay. so I, I think we could do it either way. So whatever the council. Do you have a recommendation in terms of what the wording would be? Yeah. Um, so I changed it. Right now it says any room that has a legally conforming egress window may be converted. We would change it to any room that had a legally conforming egress window on January 1, 2018 may be converted. So changes has to had and adds a date. Okay. Council? Are procedurally, are we able to approve that amended version tonight, or do we need to approve what's on the agenda and then come back and make the change on the second reading? You, you can do the amendment tonight. Tonight, you can approve the amendment and then and then approve the ordinance on first reading as amended. Okay, John, are you ready for an amendment? Yep. Well, I move that we amend uh, the proposed language according to what was just read. Second. All right. Discussion. Okay, uh, seeing as this is first passage of an ordinance, we will open up public input on this particular topic. Is there just, any this is just We the just amendment. have the amendment to vote on. Pardon me? We need to move on, mo uh, vote on my motion. To amend? Yeah. yeah. Yours, yours to amend. Okay, yours to amend, but not the pack. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yes, all right. Thank you. Uh, it's a motion. Motion. Those motion. in favor say, of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, all right. Now we'll open up public input. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to address council? Al? This will be brief, but I just wanted to thank oh, Al Warren, 3121 Maplewood Road. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank the city staff and the city council for taking time and effort to go over this and look through the code and see whether any adjustments could be made because you guys are busy with a lot of um, items, shall I say. Uh, <laughs> so I just wanted to express my appreciation that everybody looked through this and read it and uh, pretty much thanks for your time, both staff and city council. Thank you, Al. Appreciate that. Anybody else wish to address council on this topic? Seeing now, we'll close public input. Now, proceed with the uh, first passage of amended ordinance. Move on first reading. Second. Okay, move to second. Discussion? I have a question that also came to us today, um, and that was a resident speculating that um, the uh, that we have no idea how many rec rooms um, have have ended up in rental properties and that um, these rec rooms already have egress windows. And um, so, and I think this is something we discussed when we were going over this earlier, but can you just reaffirm um, your understanding of how many properties that we, we think that we're talking about by this ordinance? Um, I can't speculate how many properties, as you're talking, it would be a large living area with an egress window sure. built in. Probably most of the properties in these areas are older and they don't have, they, the code at that time didn't require the egress window in those common areas. So it'd be something that's been added since. 
um, which is totally possible. Mm -hmm. But I would say that probably most people aren't adding egress windows to rec rooms just because. Uh, and narrowing the time frame for them to apply to the 30 days, I think, will limit the number of people mm -hmm. applying for this, too. Okay. Anything else? Roll call. Aye. 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 Okay, motion carried. <clears throat> I am 43, second reading of ordinance adjusting water rates for 7%, effective July 1st, 2019. Move on second. Second. Okay, discussion. Roll call. Aye. 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 And item 44, 114 South Dakota Avenue. Uh, council, we get, got a memo from staff that they we have not received the res, the uh, zoning change agreement for 1114 South Dakota Avenue. And so they're requesting that that is pulled and that we will not proceed with the third passage until we have a signed agreement actually in hand. But we can proceed tonight with item 44B, second passage of ordinance rezoning from community commercial residential to community commercial residential with revised master plan. Move on to second reading. Second. All right, move to second. Discussion? I do have a question. Given that um, 44A is not ready, I wonder, has anything changed in the plan for this property that we know of? Yeah, I don't, I don't believe so. The, uh, uh, the uh, zoning change agreement was prepared based upon what's been discussed previously. Okay. Uh, staff made sure that, you know, that was in there. And then uh, it's been sent and simply just not returned yet from the uh, owner. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Roll call. Aye. 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 And 45, third passage and adoption of prohibiting parking at all times on east side of North Riverside Drive and prohibiting parking at all times on the north side of Harris Street, ordinance number 4381. Move on third reading. Second. <clears throat> Move to seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Moving on to disposition of communications to councils, we have four items. The first is letter from Kyle Porman, which <coughs> Mr. Porman addressed council a while ago. And uh, Tracy, I did, uh, council, I did ask, uh, I talked to uh, John Joyner before the meeting, and Tracy is also part of the conversations regarding what might be policy just for your information, um, not to have discussion ex extensively, but <clears throat> as you consider whether or not this gets moved to an agenda item. So Tracy, if you want to just comment on that, excuse me. Yes, so uh, as was mentioned, it is typical policy that when the property is developed, then the sidewalk or shared use path would be installed at that time. Um, it, if city council chose to uh, go forward with an assessment, Past city council, uh, past attorneys have always said that we could only assess for the sidewalk portion, not the full width of a, a shared use path. Therefore, we'd be needing to pay for a portion of that anyway. Um, we've asked the property owners in the past, because this has come up before, if they would voluntarily put these in ahead of the development, and they've said no, they have no interest. And so what you could do is you could do a project um, city funded, probably typically need to use local option sales tax as the funding um, because it's not adjacent to the street. We can't use road use tax, but we'd need to find out whether um, general obligation bonds may be an option as well. But This has been a project. I mean, Kyle, I, th I really appreciate the way you said, you said tonight, your letter is well written. Um, if there was a sidewalk there and they didn't bother to scoop their snow, we'd be on their case about scooping their snow. <laughs> These people don't even have the decency to put in the sidewalk. And you're absolutely right. There are lots and lots of people who walk in the street or have to walk through the mud there. And it's a very um, highly utilized area. I think it's appalling. I mean, it's just not good neighbors, right? I mean, if you have a property 
you, you want to be good neighbors to those around. And, and the owners of this have totally flipped the city off and the residents in that area. I, so I, I think we should move forward with providing direction to staff to come back to us with options for doing something with this area. It's, we've waited long enough as a community. So is that a motion for a staff memo? It is. Second. Okay. All right. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Carried. Thank you for coming, Kyle. Um, hey. Can I ask, are you just going to leave it as as a memo? You're not asking for anything beyond a memo at this point. Well, I, I think we need... What options are available? That's we, what you said, right? Okay. Yeah. But yeah. not putting we, it on an agenda yet. Yeah. Just, right. That's just that's want to clarify. It's our first steps and really sort of flesh out our options on this. I would anticipate that the staff memo would also include identifying what costs might be for that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, implications, how we would pay for it, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can decide if we want to put that on a future agenda to move forward as a project or not. So. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Tracy. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Item two, uh, this is just for council information. You asked a question about uh, citations north of Lincoln Way, Riverside to Grand, and south of Tracks. Um, it was also in response to the fact that it was one of the uh, requests from someone that was interested in uh, adding that area to the uh, game day uh, larger parking fine. So is there any interest on moving any farther forward on that? Or is that information sufficient to um, put in our files and just monitor what happens this coming year? I think we decided when we were discussing this last that we were just gonna be monitoring it once we got the memo. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay, good. All right, item three, memo from Mark Anson on ADA request to infill sidewalk along 14th Street. That's just info. Pardon me? That's just info, right? Yeah, the memo says, the well, yeah, the memo says the project is expected to yeah. include that requested infill. Um, there is an option though, that if the council wants to include, do a standalone project at a much higher price, it could also be an option as well too. I would actually move that we put this on the agenda so we could discuss whether we're interested yeah. in that. Right. Is there a second? A second. Okay. I, I could point out there's a third option too that we were just discussing, which would be assessing sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It's not something that the current councils have done, but looking back into history, there yeah. were times when so council we would do that, that for that infill. Too, right? yeah. 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 I'd I just like us to just yes. Yes. looking at the <laughs> options. Again. Yeah. I, would, I would suggest an option for that discussion would be also um, as a stopgap, maybe a, a temporary bus stop location for a year while we're waiting for something like this to happen. Okay. That, if that could help. Okay. Those in favor of the uh, motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item four, email from Nancy and Mark Schroeder. You heard the comments from the three different uh, um, individuals, <laughs> and also you saw a copy of the petition. I don't know if it would be helpful uh, for counsel or for the public, uh, but if you'd like, Tracy could review all of the processes that preceded the decision to do this and the public input opportunities and where we're at right now under a design contract. I, would that be helpful to, to have a brief summary of that? Tonight or at a future meeting? Well, I, no, <laughs> if you're considering, you know, action tonight, you know, of, uh, because the truth is a lot of this was discussed at great length before and based upon your direction, mm -hmm. we've already led a contract for the design mm -hmm. and that's underway right now. So if you wanted to, you know, call time out, stop all that, prepare to make change orders and so forth, that's okay. But just realize that's what would be happening. Mm -hmm. yep. I do want to say that we are addressing the ADA parking space with the design and we would be relocating that parking space. It's, this is a hard decision, and um, we, we don't ignore people who have those kind of heartfelt concerns about impacts on their livelihood. Um, you have been there a long time, um, and that's not lost on us. And I think, at least for this council member, you earn some bank when you invest in their community and stay there and uh, year after year uh, work hard. Um, so this was not an easy decision. I don't want you to, to take that away. Um, for this council member, it was a question of safety. Um, and I appreciate the concerns with convenience for your customers. We have to balance that against the 
the many, many thousands of students who are utilizing that corridor, it's changed uh, as we've seen the intensification of students living um, on that side of Lincoln Way. We've had to really rethink uh, safety in different places we cross Lincoln Way, but that Welch corridor is very important from a safety perspective. And for me, that was um, how I uh, made that decision. But I, um, I think it's important that you know, and, and there are others who have expressed that concern, that you were heard and, and that your concerns are valid. It's just we had, at least for this council member, I had to weigh that with respect to the <coughs> other concerns. So the question before you is, <clears throat> is there interest in reconsidering the decision or not? If the answer is no. no. Do you want a motion to that effect? Right. Um, I would move that we not reconsider that decision at this time. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Decision will not be reconsidered. <coughs> All right. Council comments? Gloria? I want to thank Bob for his years of service. And uh, Steve and I were discussing whether it's the case that you are the longest sitting assistant city <laughs> manager, just as he is the longest serving city manager. And I believe that is true because we did not have well, in the country long term. No, in the world. <laughs> well, possibly who knows? Um, but we did not have assistant city managers for a very long time in Ames. And so mm. I believe, and I'm going to do a little research before next Monday. I believe you are the longest sitting assistant city manager, and I want to congratulate you and thank you for all your years of service. Thank you. I'm very much well thanked tonight. So. <laughs> uh, that's else? all I've got. David? Yes, I have kind of a newbie question about, about bidding and awarding and contracts and all that. This is my question. Is, um, is the date of letting a bid the same thing as the bid due date? I'll let Tracy come back up. She's going to get a good workout tonight. <laughs> so we have the bid letting. And so if we say it's at 2 p.m. on April 17th, then by 2 p.m., the bids have to be in the city clerk's office that has the official time of that official clock that says 2 o'clock if they turn it in to a different office and don't get it to the city clerk's office by two o'clock, then it's a non-responsive bid. So that's the bid letting. And so then <sighs> we have a purchasing agent or one of ourselves carry them from the city clerk's office at 201 into the conference room and we uh, publicly open the bids and read them aloud. So oftentimes the contractor's representative will be there to see whether Sometimes they don't show up, but then we actually open them and read them. And then we take them back to our office and do all the math checking because um, oftentimes their written numbers are, can have an error. And so we, okay, that's so, why we say it's an apparent opening. Okay, so the answer is yes, they, they are the same? A the date of- Letting versus a bid opening? No, the the- um, th is the b bid due date the same as the date of letting? Yes. Okay, thank you. Because we different language was used in different places and in, in part of the agenda, and I just wanted to make sure we did the right thing. That's thank you. I have no other comments tonight. Jim? So I wanted to just thank uh, Ms. No tonight. Uh, just two tremendous Iowa State basketball seasons this year, and uh, I know it's just sports, but they uh, these teams sort of capture our attention and. Uh, represent our community and what a great uh, season both of them had. Um, I have um, one item of business. I wanted to follow up with an email I sent to council with respect to um, asking for uh, direction uh, for guidelines of how the risk manager should communicate with the city council and city information officer. And I would move that uh, we ask staff to come back with um, a memo uh, laying out options for 
uh, developing a policy um, on how the risk manager should communicate with city council and city information officer. This was something that Steve asked me to do. Second. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Nothing further. Rowan. Did you, were you going to move about our options on Lincoln? Lincoln apartment? Um, I was asked to hold that for a bit. So okay. um, I'm going to sit tight on that for sure. a bit. Just checking. Yeah. Nothing for me today. Ellie. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Hi. over there. Yeah, over here. <laughs> I just want to echo my congratulations to Bob, and I hope that you have a lovely, relaxing retirement. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. I said my piece and I you did <laughs> <laughs> um, just say I will not go into much detail but um, there's still a lot of things going down at the Iowa legislature went down the state house again today and um, I believe I have nothing of, uh, definitive to report at this point in time so we'll just keep council apprised of how things continuing to go on so all right entertain a motion to adjourn Move we adjourn. All right, we are adjourned.